Today we're working on concrete stuff. We're working on getting materials here for the build. Uh, we're still working on finalizing the ICF wall vertical rebar stuff. So I need to do a little bit of research on the site to get that information to our engineer. We're working on getting the ICF blocks ordered. Uh, we've got to do a little bit of measuring out here to determine exactly the number of blocks that we're going to need because we're going to be doing a step down footing. Uh, my engineer has questioned or just wants to be sure that we've got enough drop from the location of the rear bathroom to the septic tank. So I've got to do a few leg steps this morning to help get us moving forward on getting the plan ready. So the bathroom is going to go in this corner. Perfect. So our grade level was around one foot of drop. And according to our permit, there's an as-built drawing that indicates that that fitting is 24 inches below grade, which means that there's a total of three feet of drop from the back corner. And let's pull a quick measurement off of this edge over here. We're at approximately, let's be conservative here, probably 42 feet, which means that we would need 10 inches of drop because the appropriate minimum drop on a sewer line is a quarter inch per foot. And now I need to grab some information on the step down footings for the ICF company, which will help us determine the number of block that we'll use for our frost wall. The way we're building this footing is to conserve resources, but still provi provide ourselves with plenty of frost protection. Where the hillside starts here, pretty quickly we're over two feet deep, which is the frost depth here for footings. So there's no need to put a frost wall back here. The frost wall will start probably around here and will be out toward the front, along the front, and then we'll only go back as far as we need to go over on the east side. We're at 28 feet. That's the minimum number probably on the frost wall. So what I need to do is calculate how many blocks would be a perfect fit. I've got to get this information sent over to our engineer and our ICF company to make sure they're taken care of. A lot of phone calls are going into these kind of like final last little kind of mini steps as we get close to setting the forms for the concrete. I did talk to the concrete pump today. There's a good chance we're going to pump these footings, which we normally wouldn't do because the pump will cost half as much as the concrete. But let me show you. So our footing here is 37 feet square. The problem is the concrete truck, if he comes here with his aggregate slide, he will not be able to reach those back corners. We cannot muck the concrete to the back corners. It's just too much work. So what we'd have to do is leave the footing out in a section of this front side here so that the concrete truck could drive in. Then after the concrete truck's gone, we'd have to redig or dig and form up this footing in the front and then pour that probably ourselves. We really wanna just focus on getting the footings done. So we've talked to the concrete pump folks and they're willing to come out and pump this footing for us. This is something that for those folks who are watching this to get some information, you need to consider how your truck is going to get the concrete into your footings. For us, a pump, the truck can sit right here or even over here and they can walk around and pump all those footings so we can build every single footing and pour them all at once. All right, awesome. We have been scrambling on the phones. We've rounded up a concrete pump, but Alyssa and I've talked about it and we decided to hold off probably until Monday for the pour. The concrete guy that we've been relying on for guidance, he's available on the weekends to come by and help us. We want him to look over the foundation before we pour. And that will also give us an additional two days to get the forms correct and get all the rebar and everything. And so right now I'm actually gonna work on trying to figure out if we need to take any material out of the excavation area because we've got a little bit of a high spot, which is okay. We just need to make sure that that high spot is not above where the slab would go or the foam that's gonna go underneath the slab. It's very deceptive to the eyeball. This looks like the high spot right here. 
and it's actually that back corner. We're wanting to make sure that the back wall is not too low. So we're actually going to use that high spot as the bottom of the footing. And that means that all of this will actually end up getting backfilled. So I needed to make sure that where I have set the step downs, which is this paint mark here, that at the height where the bottom of the footing will be is at least below frost depth and it looks good right here. It looks even better because our sewer will probably come right through here, which is almost a straight shot out to the septic tank. One of the big drivers of getting this work done as soon as possible, at least the footing is that back retaining wall. The soil is actually really stable here. A lot of people watched our water system video and they had a lot of uh, freak out moments because of the height of this wall and the aggregate and everything. And I'm not saying that this wall couldn't collapse, but the septic or the cistern hole was an exception because we had four feet of snow and six inches of rain on top of that snow, which is what made that thing somewhat unstable. Otherwise, it was very stable. We were able to drive the backhoe right to the edge of the trench with no issues. That said, we don't want to push our luck. We don't want to get caught with this, maybe a gully washer, you know, a thunderstorm, something come through and, and unsettle this. So once the footing's in, it's not such a mayday mayday because we can clean the footing off and you know, we'll, we'll have something we can build from. Our concrete contractor advised us to stay away from over excavation. I'm pretty sure you can see this pink string. The excavation is very close to that string because we don't want to remove all that dirt. Every bit of dirt you remove, you have to put back. And trust me, one foot of dirt does not sound like much, but one foot of dirt on that back wall is yards and yards of soil. We've given ourselves enough room that we can shovel to get the forms in. And there's just enough room to put our drain pipe outside the footing and that's it. So that when we build the walls and we have to backfill, it's just that much less work. How's the elicinator holding I'm feeling up? Very sensitive to the heat today. Yeah, you haven't bitten my head off, and I haven't bitten your head off, so. But it's coming along. I think for me, this is one of the hardest parts mentally: is squaring all this up. It's yeah, it's I don't a trip. Know, somehow it's always off just a little bit. Yeah. But I think we have three sides done. Yep. So in theory, the last side. In theory, if we right do our on job, the money. <laughs> we'll celebrate with a margarita. Which means it won't. Find our problem. Are you kidding me? It's made in, is it made in Japan? Where the, what? <laughs> I am absolutely speechless. What kind of tape measure has 10 inches per foot? Is that an inch? It is an am inch. Am I crazy? Do we do any measurements with this? Yeah, we squared that with this. So that's why it's all messed up. So, so we have to throw that one away and do it all again with this one. What in the? I have no words. You have to check everything in this world. Who makes a tape measure with 10 <laughs> inches per foot? I'm gonna go get a drink of water. We decided it's really good. We don't have like a curse jar because we would have enough in there for a lot of really nice dinners. 
If you know why there's 10 inches per foot. Well, it's metric. It's not metric though. Like, hold on, okay, here's how you'll know. So let's hold one foot. So here's a foot on nine feet. Dude. And there's a foot on two feet. So we did a little shimmy shimmy here and a little shimmy shimmy there. And then we took our final measurement for the fourth side and guess what, dead on. So in the middle of our rant, we figured it out. I have no idea, but I'm really glad we didn't rely on that tape measure for the entire job. And it dawned on us that it was off. I don't know how, I even know how that happened. So we got everything squared yeah. and level. Squared and level. So now, which is huge. It only we took actually us need <laughs> to go get form material and stakes. And yes, we're buying that lumber because it's not cost effective for us at this point to try to cut our logs up into form material. Plus, we'll use it somewhere else in the structure. And I will start digging. We're back from town. The air conditioning was awesome. We picked up a lot of lumber. We're thinking we're gonna put them in the middle of this home site here. But first, we gotta move the backhoe. Do you wanna share this? I put the sprinkler out before we left to knock the dust down. I forgot and left the sprinkler on. The good news is our system ran out of water. The other good news is I don't think there's gonna be much dust. Nope. <laughs> we bought all of the steak that the hardware store I think we're gonna need a hundred of the two footers total of which we have 40 and the three footers Yeah, with all this rocky soil like it's hard to get a bite So you have to get in there a foot and a half to get any bite Also from storage we got our concrete levels and these are from our estate hall. Yeah, and Nails that have been storage that we brought with us all the way from Oregon. It's funny My dad actually labeled this bucket 16 penny duplex. Oh, yeah so hopefully we can use those for the forms. I think they might be a little meaty, but we'll give her a shot. Hopefully we can burn these up and get them out of storage. Concrete nails, galvanized nails, duplex nails. It's like a gold mine. If we have to buy a nail for this project, I'm gonna be miffed. So for lumber, really critical. We paid a premium for this lumber because we needed lumber that's straight, doesn't have crown in it, doesn't have a bunch of bow in it, it's not warped, and they will make our life so much easier instead of battling warped and twisted boards. That's something that we learned on the concrete pour that we did for this other gentleman. One of the things we learned was the value of a flat, square, true board, especially for footings. We picked up long lumber, which always costs more money. So these are 16 foot boards. Each side of our forms will have three boards, two long boards, one short board, good. which will be very quick because you'll put a stake in one end, a stake in the other end, level the board, you're done. Put stakes all along it, hammer it all in, you're in business. So we could do the same job with shorter boards or cheaper boards, etc. but the quality and the length will make this portion of the build go much smoother. Money versus time. Hey buddy, have you been in hiding all day? Hey buddy. Well, that's a comfortable spot for you. Oh my goodness. Hey. Boogaboo, should we spray it bright orange so it's visible? No, because then your spots won't help you hide. Boogaboo, you're air needing. Yeah. Oh yeah. It is time to dig the frost wall. Step woo down, woo. right? Hopefully we dig this the right depth and we don't make a bunch more work for ourselves. <laughs>
Um, I think we should leave the laser level out. Not Kay. the laser level, but the tripod. Yep. That way I can put the laser level back yep. on there. I think having your help, while as boring as it is, might oh, be yeah. watching me it's deactivate. Huge. You yep. can just jump in the trench and tell me if I'm on yeah. the right depth I didn't or not. realize that you, I guess I didn't realize you were doing that. So I would have done it earlier. No, no worry. I think it helps a lot. Just not having to get on and off the excavator all the time. Cause I have to throttle down. You don't want to jump off that excavator with the throttle kicked up. Cause yep. if you, tr if you kick it into drive, that's bad. It's going to drive until it hits something. Jesse, it's officially too dark. The camera is having a hard time focusing. So we have to wrap this up. That's how you know it's, it's, it's done. It's struggling. Uh, that's how we measure time. We, we measure it's, time and focus. Ability. It's a lot brighter in my camera than it is outside. That's cause you're cranking it's the probably ISO. nine o'clock, maybe a little later. All right, so tomorrow morning we pick up where we left off on the step downs. We have the materials to start building footings. This is going to be exciting. I'm, I'm stoked. We're rocking and rolling. Tomorrow's yep. going to be brutal, so we better get some sleep and maybe some food. I don't even know. Sore topic. Mm. All right, let's go cuddle. Mm -hmm.